One what, you ask? One enthusiastic fan that's making the trek to Pittsburgh. Great. Matt from Trenton. I'm actually leaving in about an hour to head to Pittsburgh to root on my Detroit Lions. Even though it's preseason, to me it doesn't matter. I want to see what the backups have. And Pittsburgh is a beautiful town. I have a lot of fun in Pittsburgh in the past. This trip is just for rooting on my Detroit Lions to win. I don't know if the Pirates are in town, but if they are, stick around and go check out a Pirate game. That's a cool park. The funny thing about that park, I think that park is a, it's the same company. It is, and it was about the same uh, style. Uh, <laughs> it's just like Comerica Park. There's a lot of. Uh, they're in Los Angeles. The, the Pirates are? Sorry, kid. Anyway, we got one who's going. Matt from Trenton. Where would you recommend he go? Other than Permani Brothers, apparently. <laughs> Just go bar hopping, man. There's so many bars around the uh, the stadiums there. Yeah. Uh, I didn't even think about a road trip, but now I'm looking at tickets. Weekend trip, nice town. I don't really care about the game. Just want an excuse to road trip. That's from an unnamed texter. Do people, when they go on road trips, you know, you just say, where, where would you go? What, what place would you go to eat? You know you know what people should do? Is go to, like, the Food Network, go to the diners, drivers, and dives, or whatever, and see what, what restaurants have been there in, a, in those cities. Uh, yeah. And check it out that way. I always, I mean, look, I, my thing when I go to a new town and I do this a lot when I'm on the road with Michigan, best sandwich in, I Google search that. I've had mixed reviews, mixed success because a, a web page will pop up and I'm like, all right, I'll go check out this place. And it'll be just, Hey, they call themselves the best sandwich. It's their, <laughs> you know, it's not some ranking or anything like that, but well, work for us in new Orleans. That was a that was a hell of a long walk we went on. That was a hell of a long walk and, and a hell of a really long good. wait, and it was totally worth it. And who did we see? Uh, we saw um, Adam Richman, who used to do the Man vs. Food show. And what was the name of the place? Tel Tel what? Telmark? The Telway, I think. Telway or Telmark, something like that. It was really good. The po' boy sandwiches. Uh, regarding the Tigers, how can that guy just give up on a team with this much talent and potential? Especially when the Indians are the team to beat. The Tigers have more talent and just need to get healthy. That's from Blake. Well, I mean, that's kind of where we are. That's just what one listener did. I, I think it's going to be entertaining right down to the end. They had a great stretch last week. It was cool. Parkway, I'm sorry. Parkway, thank you. Uh, but, you know, the Tigers have rattled confidence this week. They, they have, and understandably so with the injuries they're dealing with, and then they go into Seattle and get swept by the Mariners and lose games that you could easily have seen them win, and they just didn't do it. They let them slip through their fingers. That's why I'm not discouraged because I, I, I think they'll get through this. Seattle's a good baseball team, and they're a really hot baseball team right now. And the Tigers were able to hang on them without – their best play with a couple of their, not best players, but a couple of their, the key components of that team. I mean, May, Maben is the, he's a straw that, that stirs the drink in his team. Yeah. And, and Castellanos is a big loss, not having him there. And we know the problems with the, with some of the pitchers that are out, but um, look, I'm not bright skies on this thing. I'm trying to look at the upside of, of what happened this week. I'm, I'm not happy. They lost three games. They should have won at least one of them, probably two of those games. But it's not the end of the world either because they're only a game out of the wild card at this point. The team that they're going to be chasing, the Red Sox, and they've got four games against the Red Sox starting a week from Thursday. Well, that was the thing about last week that was so impressive was that the Tigers didn't just sweep teams. They swept good teams. Maybe not a great team, but but two good teams in Boston and Houston and two teams that are in the in the playoff hunt. Uh, I'm sure their fan bases are th- saying they're in the playoff hunt. So what this comes down to is – you know, trying to refine that form, regain that form. And I'm not going to get mad at them when they're not getting over the, the cresting the hill and like taking over the reeling in and taking over the division from the tribe or putting some distance between themselves and the pack in the wild card chase until they get everybody back. Their job right now is to stick around. I mean, start thinking, think about if you take away two starters from your rotation, you got a bullpen arm that's really effective that you can't use right now, and Shane Green, uh, Cameron Maben, and Nick Castellanos are out. 
Those are all critical pieces. Stick around. The Tigers' job is to hang around. Did you see what Drew Sharp wrote the other day about Brad Osmus deserving American League Manager of the Year consideration? No, I didn't see it. Coming from that source, I mean, we nicknamed him Evil Drew Sharp for a reason years ago. I read that and my jaw hit the floor. I, I mean, I, you and I have talked about how Osmus, you know, people can't stand him and they don't have, you know, they're not seeing the big picture here. I, I still think, I mean, I would have been done with him earlier this year, but he stuck around. He's kept them in this thing in spite of all the injuries. And if they withstand all that and win this division, it'd be interesting to see what people would say about him. Because I'm sorry, if they their job now is to hang around. Just don't let any playoff team run away and hide from them, specifically Cleveland or the two wild cards. Right, three and a half games back of Cleveland, one game back of the wild card race that's all within their reach. You're absolutely right. Don't let it slip slip away. Hang in there. Battle it out. Got a lot of games against the White Sox and Can- the likes of the White Sox or Kansas City. You still got games against Minnesota. And then you've got big series against teams that you need to beat. Not just good teams like what they have coming up against Texas, but you need to beat Boston, and you've got them at home, fortunately. Boston's a team that you're going to be chasing the wild card. You need to beat Cleveland. they got seven games left against the Tribe. Hey, you want to make up ground? Here's how you make up ground. You beat the team that's in front of you. 248-539-9797. Ticket text 97136. What is going on right now with The Rock and Vin Diesel? <laughs> Apparently... The Rock tweeted something out the other day, or was it Instagram picture maybe, and he had explained how he thinks that everybody, all the women that he's working on the set of the new Fast and Furious movie, so all the women involved with it, they're great, they're professionals, they're awesome. He goes, the men, however, some of them are behaving like a bunch of candy asses, and then says a bunch of other things about them, but he didn't specifically say who. So now it's come out, I guess, that people think that he, those comments were directed at co-star Vin Diesel. And now Vin Diesel did something on social media. I wasn't able to catch what it was. He responded on his Instagram. And what did he say? He said that, uh, I, you know, I just got home. I got to see my uh, baby girl for the first time since Christmas or something like that. He's been on shooting back-to-back movies, so he's been gone for a long time. Right. You got to hear her say her first word. And then he said, if you wait a little bit, I'm going to tell you everything. And he paused and goes, everything. If you wait, I'll tell you everything. Yeah. <laughs> everything. So who uh, who you got in this one? The Rock. All day. All day, every day. Is this even a question? No. Yeah. I mean, no one likes Vin Diesel more than The Rock, right? I don't know. Does he? No, I'm saying does no, anyone. Nobody, I mean, nobody does. It, nobody oh, likes Vin yeah, Diesel. Outside more than they like The Rock. I can't imagine. TMZ was reporting that Vin Diesel was just a total pain in the ass on the set because he has his his, his name's on the producer list, and so he thought oh he could get away with everything. Yeah, you'd like to cut some people some slack when it comes to this movie franchise, given that Paul Walker died. Yep. And Vin Diesel seemed to be really affected by that when that happened what, over almost two years ago, I guess. Um. So maybe filming the next movie without Paul is tough. But I don't know. I have no idea what's going on behind the scenes there. If he's just, if Vin's being Vin Diva instead of Vin Diesel, I have no idea. <laughs> Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. We got open lines. And how tall Anderson. is he? How tall is Vin Diesel? Yeah. Well, The Rock we've established is somewhere between five eight and six <laughs> five. So next time they're standing next to one another, we can use that same range and just uh, subtract. 97 won the ticket. Hey, you all-